YouTube. It's Brian Phillips here. We're gonna open this super dainty little box here. Ugh! I hope it's as good as it is big. Oh, okay. If you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, things like that slip out all the time. <laughs> and then we explain that we were talking about an airplane. Of course. I mean, this could be what else a weed do, whacker. What else do people on the internet talk about? Not airplanes? What do we have here? We have the Olympus from FMS. It's amazing. Wow. F3A Olympus. Now, some of you might be saying, but Brian, we've never seen you do that. That's why we're doing it now. <laughs> the F3A Olympus is a model that has been on my list of things that I normally wouldn't do because it's a 3D plane for a long time. Mm -hmm. So in case you guys were wondering. Our, our son is really excited about it. Our son loves the 3D planes, and so that's pretty exciting. Now I gotta warn you, there's a little more damage on this box than we've seen from FMS packaged equipment. And I just wanna show you, there's a hole here, mm -hmm. there's some holes and scratches. So we're gonna find out. When it's your house, you can do that. Right. Easy to complete bolt-on final assembly, oh. ultra durable EPO foam. It's a pre-installed 4258, 550 kilovolt. No, not kilovolt, it's KV, which stands for times a thousand rotations per minute or some stupid that thing like that. Predator sense. outrunner motor. Okay. Pre-hinge control surfaces, thank God. Finally. Digital high-speed 17 gram digital Metal Gear servos. It's a digital high-speed 17 gram digital Metal Gear servos. It's double digital, double D's. Extra digital. I like double D's for bigger. <laughs> uh, detailed cockpit with hand-painted pilot figure. We'll see how we'll that see. worked out. Uh, auxiliary wing for improved tracking. I think that's what this thing is right here. Sure. It's an auxiliary wing, obviously. Okay. So 1,400 millimeters is not a small plane, okay, guys? I just want to remind you, but this is one freaking gigantic it's box. It's a long box. Like, why is it so big? Oh, you know why? Because it's fully assembled fuse. I wonder if the auxiliary wing is already installed. I us. doubt it. It's kind of a flat box if it is. Yeah. So if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, what we do here is we unbox them, we build them, we get them ready to fly, and then you guys decide if you like them. We don't do the fastest, bestest, cheapest. That's a bunch of wasted time. <gasps> what? Spacious battery compartment gives pilots the option to fly flying lightweight 5S batteries. What? Oh, full, full, for full aerobatic, larger 6S batteries for more sport and longer run. What the heck? Who has a 5S battery? China, listen. That's not proper English. Those. I know these things. The pictures on the so side it's a 6S. are very weird. This is a 6S platform, okay. which makes sense if it's got a 550 kV motor, although yeah. that is still, hmm. How, did you say how big the ESC was, or did it say? I don't know, I don't it's gotta it's be big. pretty dang big. We're gonna find out. <clears throat> okay. Is the wing fully assembled? Sorry. No, it's, nope. oh, it's, no, it's not, not, but there's also, this box is weird. Yes, it is. I gotta say, okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> if you guys have never been with us before on Brian Phillips RC, this is what we do. We unbox them, we build them, we answer lots of questions. In this case, evidently, we have a lot of them. And hopefully we'll make it so that you can follow along. Oh, and by the way, this one is not equipped with a reflex because it would say it's somewhere in this general vicinity. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna go ahead and use our NX10 as the transmitter. In our Spectrum <clears throat> AR631, now you could use a 637T if you want the benefit of some additional telemetry like pack voltage. On a 3D plane, that might be kind of handy because you're gonna have vastly different flight times based on how much you ride the sticks. But I'm gonna set a timer and just go with it. <clears throat> okay, we have a wing. It's red and white. Okay, let's slide this thing out. Ah, oh, it's our favorite. Look, yes. camera crew. Look right here. What What's is this? Wrong with today? Woo! Okay, 
Huge control surface. The Olympus, okay, so it should be pretty rigid. Uh, that's a 17 gram metal gear digital plastic. There's a P in there, digital P. Doesn't it Where's say, didn't it say metal on the box? It's a metal gear servo, but I don't know what the P stands for. Plastic. Well, I don't know, plastic mm. case, I don't know. Well, anyway, we're just gonna keep opening this up until we get to the answers that you're looking for. Uh, speaking of answers, if you haven't heard the answer yet, if I haven't blathered it out, it's coming, you just wait. Just or wait you can put it in the comments below and we'll try our best to answer them at some point. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. There is a plug, okay? Mm -hmm. Just one. There is a plug. Mm -hmm. There was a cat. In the box. In the box. What I was getting at before the cat rudely interrupted is that these are oh. gonna be a full length almost a full length aileron. So if I'm gonna have flap rons on a plane, it would be on this type of application. But truthfully, you may or may not need it. So I'm not 100% sure how we're gonna do this. Just kind of depends on if the plane slows down the way I want it to. Now this being a 3D plane, there's a high probability of being able to fly relatively slow because it's a 3D plane. Okay, spinner, looks pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Nothing too much too special to write home about. There's kind of a bundle of goodies here, it looks like. I'm just uh, making sure there's nothing in there. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> camera crew's gonna look at that. Oh, man, there's a large sack of stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Aren't they talking about bolt together? Yeah. Final assembly? Like, why would you go out of your way to talk about how everything is bolt together when you have to glue crap together? I was all excited for a bolt together transaction. Oh. Like why would, just don't print it. Right, you don't have to say it. <sighs> Nobody even asked. <laughs> that is weird. That is weird. It's like, a, it's like a horizontal stabilizer, but it's actually just like stuck in the top. You know, I'm, it's, it's kind of looking to me like this is an auxiliary wing. <laughs> like, you know, it's, we didn't have enough wings. We just went ahead and added one. <laughs> bolt? Together? Are we bolting it with glue? <laughs> Who came up with this crap? Okay, I don't care that it has to be glued together. Oh, lamp. Easy to complete bolt on final assembly. Hold on, let's fix this real quick. <laughs> yeah, easy to complete. We're just gonna do this. FMS, if you're watching, you might want to do the same thing for the box and you can send me a new light too. There we go. See now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, easy to complete. And who cares if they're pre-hinged control surfaces? They're always <clears throat> pre-hinged. When do you ever have to hinge your own control surface? On ARFs. Put the control horn on. You've upset my wife now. Yeah. Seriously, it's like the worst thing. It's so tedious and dumb. Is this gonna be the, is this, is this gonna be the uh, Valentine Day special? <laughs> Great. <laughs> I would make a be in trouble. Got some black rods here at rods least. Yeah, yeah, there's three of them. Everybody listen. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber. At least they've got the carbon, the carbon fiber, fiber. Okay, we're just gonna keep unpacking this. Guys, this is what we do. We unbox them, we build them, and then we set them up with the radio system so that you can follow along. If you need help, that's why we're here. We wanna grow this hobby because we like it a lot. And um, we, just, we just want your lives to be easy. So that's why we do these short videos, just kidding. Okay. There's like a fast forward button in there. <laughs> that to get to the end of the bolt on assembly. ISR 417263. I'm, I'm sure that means something to somebody. Probably. I'm sure it's, it's probably like, oh, I can't believe you didn't understand what that meant, Brian. Of course that means this dude, this really popular dude in RC that everybody knows. It's like his personal phone number. <laughs> There's, uh, there's, Someone will tell us in the there's comments. There's letters, okay? Yeah, please correct us. Um, okay, so 
as you can see, final bolt together assembly. Like final, like when you're almost done. <laughs> then you bolt it together. It kind of reminds me of a guitar. It's a little. <laughs> but look, it's thin and skinny. It's weird. It's it is weird. It's kind of like a fish. It does. That's what the F7F looked like when we pulled it out. Yeah, but. But the F7F was like, wow. Cool. Amazing. Can't get enough of this. Screw holes. This is going to be a relatively easy build until, you know, sure. you have to start gluing everything together. The what instruction you... manual is not folded. All is. Still everything not is saved. Yeah. The reputation salvaged. All right, horizontal stabilizers here, as you can see. Oh, not damaged, but the box did. Show them this. Look, right there. Look. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. That's what I said, that's too. That's kind of scary. Okay, so looking at the uh, tail feathers here, we've got a pinch hinge design. Does not look to be reinforced in any way, which is a little disappointing. There might be something embedded in there. There is a shaft here that's embedded, but the pinch hinge is still... Just a pinch Just inch, a pinch very inch. surprising. I thought there'd be an embedded one in there. But they did that for you, so you should be. You got that right. Okay, continuing along, we've got some landing gear. Oh, final bolt together assembly with a wood prop. That's beautiful. Mm. Oh yeah. You like. Pulled the sheet right off. 15-7 prop wood. I do, like, wood. I do like a good wood prop. Okay, and then we have some landing gear with some pants. We can take those off if we get uh, so inclined. You can break them off if you're so inclined. And rock hard tires. Uh, feel them, squish them. They're less than mm, rock. Not quite rock hard. It's like not quite titanium hard. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening, FMS, take that note off and then Give us some squishy tires. Squishy tires make me feel better as a pilot about myself because then when I bounce them in, it's because I really bounced them in. Okay, there's nothing on the bottom, as you can see. Okay. So we have fully emptied the box. There's a cat threatening to attack our box, so I went and threw that at her. Okay, so this, this is um, more pieces than I had hoped for in this box, but at the same time, once you get all the crap from the packaging off of your dining table and kitchen area, it's not maybe as bad. Show them the wide angle. It's, it's not that many pieces, really, if you get right down to it. I mean, it. it is a big plane. It's a big plane. 1,400 millimeters, you know. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take our plane stand. This is a Robart plane stand, okay? It's amazing. Okay. Since you may be watching this on or about Valentine's Day, I want to tell you about a, a story. One time I took my wife's Afghan, also known as a blanket, if you're a man. A blanket. Call it an Afghan? Whatever it is. And uh, yeah, I had a P51 and I just ripped a hole in it with my P51. You know, and it's happened to everybody. Right. Everybody has ripped a hole at least once and with their, their wife's prop. blanket. These are normal things, guys. Every night when I sit on the couch. There's always a, there's hole, a hole reminding me of my shore fallings. And uh, usually when I, when I bring myself back to console, lick my wounds, then I drag myself up by my bootstraps and I go look at my Robart plane stand and it makes me think, probably should have bought that before I put the <laughs> before hole. Before the blanket. So if you guys are watching this on or about Valentine's Day, we'll have a link to the Robart plane stand in our supplies link on brianphillipsrc.com. Or you can just buy the plane for yourself and forget about all that crap because she'll forgive you maybe. <laughs> all right, so there's, there's some pieces. What in the freaking God's green earth are we dealing with here? Those are huge. Great Bolts control. together. Hey, listen, it's bolts together, okay? Bolt together, bolt together. Obviously it's bolt together because there are hinges in here. That, who in the, who thinks that's bolt together? You gotta glue that, glue that stuff in, right? Am I missing something here? And 
how many hinges do you need? <sighs> That's why I'm seriously. It's just the rudder, right? Yeah, and there's already rudder hinges. There's already in hinges it. in it. Are they wanting us to rehinge this because they realize that this should have been hinged better? They better not. If that's the case. I demand a Valentine's Day gift. Yeah. I think I'm gonna just not do it and let it rip off. All right, so guys, let's look in the instruction manual, something we rarely do as men. Uh, flying weight, who cares? Motor size, who cares? Amp is, it's 60 amps, the ESC. 2200, wow, 5,000, 3,300 through 5,000. That's, that's a big one. Okay, so how about 4,000? Is 4,000? It's between 3,300 and 5,000, but that's probably not a 35C, is it? Not it's a 50C. Oh, well, there you go. So I'm just gonna stick this in Sounds the hole amazing. over here and get it charging. Look, step two, glue. Oh, final assembly. They just show the three that are installed. They're not installing more. So why do they have all the rest of them? I don't know. Hold I'm on, just in. check the box. Does it say anything about bolt together? No, it just says easy to okay. complete. Just, I I thought maybe it's it's like a distant memory. I felt like they said something about that. Yeah, they were. we were confused. Yeah. Okay. You have to put the wing fences on. <sighs> yeah, with bolt, bolt together. Bolt together bolt, wing bolt fences. Bolt together wing fences. I do not see anything else about other... China. China. Other hinges. There's no other hinges. Listen, needed. I'm sure you're probably supposed to do this with. You're you're probably. It supposed says to foam glue. Let's does it say foam glue? It does glue? say foam glue. Look. Foam Whoa! It glue. does. Instead of why do they have a CA bottle? Yeah, good idea. Because China only has one bottle logo. Okay. Are you doing this, this one? Now? Obviously goes there. Okay. Goes there. Okay, guys. You guys want to know how to use China glue? China glue from FMS is the best China glue you can get unless you get it from somebody else and then it's called foam to foam. In fact, this is, this is. Is that also the same thing as foam tack? It's, it's whatever. It's all the same stuff, whatever. right? Whatever, no, it's not. it's not. I've used BSI's foam tack. I don't like it. If you guys like it, congratulations. I have foam tack downstairs and it sits in a bottle and I use it to like glue crap to my HVAC system when I've got foam that I want to deaden the HVAC system with, because I hate using it on planes. Oh. This I have had better luck with, and it's still about the same price. And this I've had amazing luck with, and it's about the same price, it just comes in different bottle sizes. Right. Okay, so if you're buying your receiver from Horizon, when you follow our link in the video description below for the 631 or which, whichever one you go to, you can buy one of these for like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And then these things for like six bucks. That, but just gotta remember, they're different sizes. Yeah. These ones you pierce the lid. This one you don't. You get the benefit of all the safety warnings because this is built legally, 50 milliliters. I think this one's like 40 milliliters. Okay, so it's really close to the same. They work about the same. They're both clear. Mucilage has yellowing, okay? Mucilage is a Hobby King product. These are mucilage type glues, okay? See that, look, clear. Well, somebody just asked about foam tack. No, the other day I, in the I know. So I saw that asking. comment, and I'm they like, do. I don't want to be rude to people, but it's like, I haven't had good experience with it. I like BSI for CA, and I use them all the time for CA, but I don't use them for foam tack. Mm. Bob Smith Industries. Yeah, okay. I knew. I knew what that meant. If Bob Smith Industries would finally reply to our emails, it'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Because we've been sending them out for. I'd love to talk to you. Four or five years. And that's funny because. People don't realize this when you do YouTube stuff and you have relationships with like hundreds of different companies in China. And then these American companies like, you know, the one that's 45 minute drive from our house called SIG Manufacturing, one of the biggest, most largest legacies of balsa wood aircraft in the history of time that I would have enjoyed as a kid with my grandparents and things like this. When you uh, have marketing that runs, um, you know, perfectly in the 1960s, but haven't updated anything since then, I just want to remind you guys because I'm not trying to bust anybody's balls here, but they don't they don't return emails, they don't return phone calls. It's kind of embarrassing because you know, like we've got this huge audience of people that love RC and that would love to buy their product, and yet they can't be bothered to return a phone call or an email or anything like that. That is kind of annoying. 
Because like, mm -hmm. how many of you here are watching because you bumped into one of our videos and you've been doing it for years now? Raise your hands and put it in the comments below. And that's why BSI, why have you not come back to us? And same thing with, uh, same thing with SIG, like what the heck people? We just wanna grow and advance this hobby. We love this hobby, okay? It's not rocket science, it's pretty easy stuff, you know? So anyway, but yeah, so as you can see, we obviously don't ever badmouth the people we work with, especially when they say bolt together and then immediately ask you to lose to use glue. We definitely never make fun of it. Okay, have I covered our bases now? Mm -hmm. But yeah, so SIG is in Montezuma, Iowa, 45 minute drive from where we live. Never heard back from them, ever. I think they're moving their operations to Illinois because they like to uh, deal with a bigger, more oppressive government. Yeah, small town Iowa is pretty rough. Yeah, small town Iowa, one of the easiest, most relaxed. Well, there is more taxes probably which I don't really understand, but. Okay, so glue, foam glue. Let it sit there, let it cook off. What that means is that eventually it's gonna get tacky. And then you're gonna stick them together. That's the way it's gonna work. I was just amazing. waiting for a tacky joke. That was the joke. Come on, connect the dots, camera crew. Okay, so this is dryish to the touch. So this is gonna go in here, in the gap, okay? Stick it in the gap, slide it back, don't get cut. Okay, slide it in tight. You're probably thinking to yourself, geez, Brian, you got glue all over the place. Don't you worry now, don't you worry now. I'm gonna take this thing that I just used to slather my glue all over, okay? And this is one of the reasons why I really like this stuff. See, it's on my fingers. Let me just rub it off and it's gonna go bye-bye. Okay, very easy. Now you can also take a clean Q-tip, that's what I like to use, and a clean Q-tip, and we'll just kinda take off any excess that we find. And then over here, I just got a little teeny bit rolled up on that edge, and you can literally pull that stuff right out, and you'll never know it was there. Just be careful about um, if you've got like a really soft finished paint, meaning that it's like recently dried because then sometimes you'll catch that and cause a little bit of trouble. Oh, by the way, they glue reinforced that hinge. I think they included hinges because they're afraid that people are gonna be upset about the fact that it's a pinch hinge design, hon. Mm. That's, if you wanna talk about tacky, seriously. Yeah. That's like, here customer, fix the problem that we made. Um, so I'm not saying that's necessarily the problem, but they definitely glued that, that joint. Yeah, I can see, yeah, you can see They the did shine. a glue, they did a yep. glue joint, but this is a pinch hinge and it's a 3D plane for God's sakes, people. It's supposed to have a little bit of resilience. Um, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Okay, we gotta get this thing glued. It's gonna be dry here yeah. soon enough. Okay, if you ever put on this glue and it dries before you get around to it and it's too dry, what you can actually do is you can re-wet it with a more, a uh, little bit more of it, okay? But like, it's kind of amazing how effective that stuff is. Cause like, I'm gonna try to, I, if I hold it the other way, it's just gonna hold itself because of the mechanical position. But as you can see, it's, it's on there, okay? You could fly right now with that. You could. Now, if it was a manned aircraft and you had like kids in the back seat and stuff, I probably wouldn't do that. But if it was just your wife, you know. If you're gluing our manned aircraft together with China glue, I might be concerned. China. You'd be surprised how they build real airplanes. Uh, I know, I probably don't wanna know. Yeah. Everybody just assumes airplanes are really heavy duty and strong, but they're kind of like- They're they, not, except we light, right? They need, to, they need to go into the air. With a bunch of people in them? Fly. Okay, pull these wires out, guys. And get yourself ready to rock and roll. Okay, so a couple things to consider been a lot of griping today on this on this build but at the end of the day we do like fms equipment but it still annoys us when they put things like bolt together and like i didn't care i wouldn't have cared just don't tell me just don't tell me this goes on the top this goes on the back i know that we have to get all this stuff correct okay yeah they said foam foam glue it's not like they said ca huh. 
So I guess in this case, I know that this is gonna be, the wing joiner is gonna go between there, okay? So we're ready to go. I always like to forget that step for some stupid reason. And then we're gonna go back over to uh, China glue. And by the way, even if you're getting uh, foam to foam, just grab some of this and then you can test both because I've actually been quite happy with this and I have no problem with the foam, foam to foam, but I can tell you that, you know, whichever one you got on hand is fine. Yeah. Okay, now you can't squeeze that into the hole, but what you can do is you can squeeze it onto the hinge. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit different setup because obviously you want this thing to glue, but you wanna to try to avoid getting it into the actual glue hinge or into the, into the hinge itself. So how do you stop the glue from getting into the hinge? Well, there's some people that will take and they will do a little bit of white lithium grease across there. See the string guys, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just like that. You have to make the noise or it doesn't work. You questioning my truth? Nope, never. All right, so this obviously goes in like that. I'm just kidding. It goes like this. So I just have to slide this in the hole and that's gonna slather the glue around. So I'm just gonna line up all three, just like this. And then I'm gonna cram it in. And then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop short. Why am I gonna stop short? Let's show them. If you wanna come around there and show them their camera crew. So that you don't squish glue into the actual hinge point. Yep. Right? And here's what I'm gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that we're lined up top to bottom, which we are fine. Then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna unslather any excess. I'm just gonna pick it up with a clean Q-tip. And then I'm gonna just clean that. And now I can open it up and push it all the way tight, provided I have a gap, okay? Now I can take this and I can wipe off any excess, any excess, and then flipping to the other side, any excess. Now remember, this is just China glue. So the truth is, even if you left that glue on there, it's probably not gonna hurt anything because I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Does this yes. need to go in? It's supposed to go in and I didn't do that. Okay. So that would have been good to do. But also, how the heck are you supposed to do that whilst you're installing it? Well, that's why I was asking her if there was another step for that. I'm just gonna pull it up and see if I can get it in there. Guys, this is not the right way. I'm just gonna have to pull it out a little bit, but with China glue, you can get away with that. Drop it in, drop like it's... How the heck are you supposed to line that up while you're sliding it in? What a joke. Thanks for pointing that out since you were reading the directions there, camera crew. I didn't read the directions. He did. I was looking for extra hinge points. Okay, it's in. Okay, so now I'm gonna push my hinge back in. And remember, we already got the excess out, so the excess is really what we're concerned about. We're not concerned about a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit. We're just worried about tons of glue getting in there. Because if you have tons of glue, then you could cause a problem. So I just put a little bit on my fingers as I rotated this through my fingers. And now I'm gonna go back and do it one more time and just make sure nothing is too overly bad. And then I'm just gonna actuate this until I hit the end stops and make sure I'm satisfied with where they are. Also, you see this gap? Mm -hmm. That means I probably need to push this whole assembly up just a little bit, which I just did. And yet it's still got that little gap, whatever, fine with me. Okay, I'm looking at a couple of different things. One here to see if we have a big gap, we don't. And two, I wanna make sure this gap is similarly even to the top. And so far, so good. So no big deal. All right. Now, we're gonna put this horizontal stabilizer together. How do you tell the top from the bottom? Well, in this case, you can tell this goes over by that. And if you look at the top, it's got this design and the bottom has the red, okay? This is gonna bolt together, which is good by design. Or as advertised. And slide this in. I suppose one could argue that we are telling our audience about what, what to expect. So it shouldn't matter what they say on the box because we're gonna tell them the way it actually is, correct? Yeah. And that is true, guys. That's one of the reasons why you watch Brian Phillips RC is because we're gonna tell it 
the way it really goes down and not the way that the manufacturer claims it's gonna go down because sometimes those are two different things. All right, so we need to get a bolt out. You need some 16 millimeter. Let's help the people figure out what 16 millimeters looks like. Let's. You ready? Why don't you come over here? First things first, dump them out onto a counter where they blend in and all you see is reflections of giant round things with a brighter central point. Okay. Like right here, like right, that reflection. There. Okay, so these are Those huge. Are the Those wings. are for the wings. How do you know? Because there's five and you usually get one extra. Then there's these ones. Stop rolling around, guys, jeez. I'm gonna just flip those around. There we go. All right, so you see what I'm doing here? Oop, that one's longer. That one's longer too? No. So I'm just checking the length. Stop. Okay, so this is literally what we're gonna do. Pretty complicated stuff, I know. And this is gonna tell us what we have to work with. So obviously there's gonna be two, four, six, eight, and then three, and then five, right? Mm -hmm. So the fifth might have to do with a prop, I wonder. And then there's three, so I think we need two of the 16 millimeters. Are we gonna have to measure? Cause like, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I figured it out. The 16s are the shortest ones. The, that goes for the horizontal stabilizer and the gear, cause you need four on the gear. And then the mid length that you need two of are the 20 millimeters. And that's for your lovely auxiliary wing. Oh, that bolts together? Yes, that is bolt together. I'm beginning to challenge my understanding. So, so you these need the long ones? Middle. No. Those are for the wing. Those are for the, yeah. Okay, so we need four of the, two of these two for of this them. and four for the landing gear. Yes. Okay. So that's two millimeter drive. Slide it in, start screwing. Well, at least it lined up fairly easy. It's always a plus. Yeah. Okay. So folks, later on, we're gonna do radio setup when we're done assembling this plane. And once we do radio setup, we'll show you how to set up AS3X and safe so you can get the most out of this plane. And if you're brand new to the hobby and you're just getting back, or you're just getting back rather, and you just need a little bit of help getting your radio set up, you're in the right place. We're gonna help you do that once we fumble and bumble our way through this build. And that's really what we like to do is try to get people on the right track to actually having a successful flight and enjoying their equipment. Now, this is not one to start mm -hmm. and I can tell what's going on is that it's just not lined up. So I'm gonna try to push the whole wing assembly through and see if I can catch an edge, which so far I'm having just a complete and utter lack of success at. I'm gonna pull this out, double check I don't have my cross threads, which I don't. And then I'm just looking and it actually appears that my wing is pushing a little bit too far, oh. which is unusual. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide back in. I'm gonna pull this out just a hair. There it goes, it's going in guys. So you're usually better at finding the hole. I don't know, sometimes I gotta wiggle around the tip until it slips right in. Yeah. In this case, it was just being difficult. Okay, so now that that's done, we are not gonna install our linkages, but we are gonna install, no, we're not gonna install the linkages or the output shafts. Okay. Or the control arms, if you will. Yeah. Here's why. We don't wanna, we don't wanna center these servos. We're just gonna let it initiate with the receiver, and then we're gonna go ahead and put this on, and then we're gonna install these after the fact. They are ball link, which is nice. And we're gonna have to do that as well on the wings, which means it's a whole nother thing. FMS. All right, continuing onward, not a big deal. Most of the time uh, when we do builds, uh, we just get kind of annoyed when we're expecting a reasonably simple build. And this has actually gone pretty dang it smooth. Has. Okay, so the auxiliary wing which is gonna literally make this look like a fish out of water. Okay, so if you wanna come over here and just look, this is gonna slip in here, okay, like that. And it's gonna drop down, and then it's gonna get screwed from the top. Okay. And it's gonna look like some sort of it a- It's gonna look super weird. Hilarious. Uh, I still think it would be pretty hilarious to watch somebody try to fly it with just the auxiliary. Just that? Because it might do it. 
Okay, so we need the long ones for that, the as in the ones. medium? Yeah. Okay, you want to show the people the medium ones before I start taking them away from the groupings? So here's obviously the main wing. These ones are the ones we use for the tail and we'll use for landing gear. Mm -hmm. And these ones are the ones, oh, that's my screwdriver. Sorry, I was kind of get distracted by things that look like that. So I'm just gonna grab this right here. Where do we put these? Uh, those will go in the hole. Uh, that does not seem right. And yet it, it is. And yet it is. By the way, while I'm screwing, show the people the painted face. How's it look? It's pretty decent. I've seen way worse faces. That's the same guy that's in the T28. That pilot is, he gets around. That's the T28 guy? Yeah, you can go show him if you want to right now. That T28 guy? That T28. Really? Yes, it's that T28, guys. The Carbon Z T28, one of my favorite planes of all time. Seriously. No, that guy is way pinker. It's the same dude. He's just painted better or worse, depending on how you look. Well, that guy has a sunburn. Yeah, I know he's sunburned. <laughs> he's sunburned and that's just the way it goes. But it's not the same guy? It's pretty similar. <laughs> it's the same guy. I know it's the same guy. All right, so now that we've got the bat wing on, we're gonna go ahead and continue to, <laughs> I'm torn, do I wanna do landing gear or wings? Probably think, landing gear. Landing why don't we do the landing gear while it's upside down? Listen, we can't all be perfect camera crew. Just saying. Let's put the landing gear in and then we'll put the main wing in, but I have to get the wire into this hole. Oh, good Lord, there's a strap in there. Ugh. Oh, Ish. that's awkward. Yeah, I know, it is. Yeah. Wait, so you're doing the wings now? No, I'm not. I'm doing the landing gear. Okay. The reason I was feeling the wings is because I, I was attempting to challenge my wonderful wife's perfect idea that couldn't possibly be flawed in any way. Mm -hmm. I need four screws. Yes, you do. Okay, so I have four of them in my hands. And if you're married, you'll understand this. <clears throat> because before you take up a challenge, to her idea, it's always better to have a rebuttal. <laughs> Prepared. This is totally gonna go on Valentine's Day, isn't it? <laughs> no, this will be before. This is the pre-Valentine's Day. Yeah, okay. Just give people time to get prepared. Steaks in the basement. That's a good one. Do, do men shop before for Valentine's Day before it's like the afternoon the, of the 14th? On the way home? Valentine's Day work? is on February 14th. I th February. Nah. F-E-B. I thought it was in March. <laughs> Don't confuse the people. Then you have to get ready for Mother's Day, but that's in May. I thought that was in July. <laughs> I don't know why they put Mother's Day before Father's Day. That was dumb. I'll trade you Father's Day for Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, I'm just tightening this. Okay, so there's four screws that hold the landing gear. Oh, that sounded poppy. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's correct. So far, it's going together pretty good. I mean, it's a bolt together final assembly. I mean, once you get past all the gluing, it's just bolt together after that. And uh, the, then a little bit of glue later too. Yeah, maybe. that's what I'm saying. No, I don't think we have to glue the control arms in. I think no, they're bolt together. No, we just screw them on. That would be close enough to bolt in. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I will, I will, I'll give him a pass on that. Control horns should always be installed. Yeah, especially with the box, it's like four and a half miles long. Yeah. If it's, if you're measuring your box in meters squared. Put on the control horns. Yes, amen. I just don't understand why we need another wing. Feels like a waste of resources. This seems good enough. I think it'll be fine. We could make a flying wing out of this thing. Who needs ailerons? Yeah, I mean, we have a rudder. I mean, it's three channel, good enough for me. 3D performance might be a little lacking. Yeah. So I think it would be wise to assemble our control arms on this. So let's do that okay. while we've got easy access, okay? So guys, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC and you don't know what all the moaning is about, <laughs> it's because we're lightweights. We're not, you've seen the planes we've done, which is why we don't like doing this. This part. 
We like doing this. We just yes. don't like we don't like having to put together things that should have been done at the factory. Yeah. Okay, that's obviously on the wrong side. Do you see why it's on the wrong side? Could you film from the other side, please? See this? There's a left and a right. Okay. What you want to use is the correct one. Yeah. Okay, that's the correct one. How do I know? Because there's gonna be a linkage that goes like this. It's gonna go to right angle, and then there's gonna be one of these control rods that goes out, boop, like that, and it's gonna go boop, boop, boop. Those are big control ones, though. What? These ones? Yeah. So? Are they gonna put it past? What do you mean, is they gonna put it past? No, the there's, there's, there's four of them. And no, they're fine. Okay. They'll be fine. That's about right. Um, okay, so now, once we get that installed, and so now it's not painted either. So you've got gray. Right. And so you've got this flat flush point. Um, kind of like in, in the bathroom, you can flush the toilet, you know. Just want to remove any ambiguity. We're not going to be using this Y cable on ours because we're going to set up flaperons. So we can just put this oh, over we there. Are. Why would we not do flaperons? Flaperons are easy. And you know, like 700 people are going to ask me, hey, Brian, how do you do flaperons? I'm going to have to tell them. You do realize this, right? <laughs> Guys, if you want to do flap rounds and you're, and you're struggling to do flap rounds, I'm not trying to make fun of you because that's not what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. But what I mean by that is we only have like 2,000 videos right now. And you can go find one that has flap rounds and you can probably copy what we did in it. But I do understand if you're brand new to the hobby, you want to be able to do it along in the same plane because there are going to be some small variations so i understand that but just keep in mind you know thousands of videos literally thousands almost two thousand almost two thousand. almost two beautiful oh yeah that's that's a pretty good feeling right there mm, very nice okay that one's going to be ready to go in mere moments, I'm just going to stick this rod right where the sun don't shine. And then this rod where the sun also doesn't shine. Beautiful. Whoa. Are they the same length? Hmm. Okay. Seems a little strange. Yes, we'll find out. Put that over there and... See how things go. Okay. So folks, also, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC and you're trying to figure out like, how the heck did this guy get this job? First of all, it's not a job. <laughs> this is a labor of love. And then second of all, um, we started doing this nine years ago because I didn't have enough memory on my cell phone. True story. And then the rest is history. I do like aviation and I like RC a lot. I like a lot. <clears throat> and then we just did, like, after we were done with the first video, then we made another one. And then we just never stopped. Ever. <laughs> My wife was not dragged in as much at the beginning. But now no, she is. I know. I don't know what happened. I don't know where I went wrong. I, yeah, there was a failure somewhere <laughs> on your part. I screwed that one up. Uh, but all joking aside, we've been doing this for a long time, and... We get kind of annoyed when the manufacturers put things like bolt together and then you have to glue it together. It's not, the gluing admittedly was not that big a deal. We'll see. Well, if the aileron rips off and I have to, I have to glue that back together, <laughs> I'm gonna be pissed one. then. <clears throat> okay, everybody see? Amazing, beautiful. Whoa, you know what that was? You glued your wing fence. My wing, my wing fence wasn't pushed over tight. So I just pushed it over tight. Okay. Make sure you have good clearance there. Yeah, well, you need to work, you need to exercise those a little bit for serious law. I know. Okay, listen, I have to stick this thing in that hole. Okay. And I've got rods, giant black rods are gonna be sticking through right at my face, and I gotta be careful not to get poked. Okay, so which way are you going first? I'm going the only way that I can, which is wait, just stay there. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this in the middle, okay? and I'm gonna drop it like it's hot, right in the center. Okay. And then I'm gonna hope to God that it makes it through the hole. Cause like, I honestly don't know. There's like a tray in there that's removable, it feels like. Okay, and then once that wire drops down, camera crew could help me from this point, but she's obviously not. Push it. Push it? 
over here, right there, right there. Wait. Can you push it? Okay. Good, yeah. good, 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 good. That's perfect. That actually went in easier than I thought it was going to. I know, just hold the tip for okay. me. Hold the tip, I'll hold the base. <laughs> okay. I'm holding the camera in my other hand. I know, I'm not saying you're not doing anything. I'm just saying, you know, for Valentine's Day special. <laughs> Make sure that people know how to do Wait, this. Wait, I can't see you stick it in the hole. Well, there's there you go. there's the black rod number one, and black rod number two goes in. Okay, now I need to take. You may be able to let go now. So I'm going to take this wire. You can come around now. Okay. I'm going to take this wire and I want to drop it in there. Okay, in this okay. little hole. You might need to shine a light. Just think back to when. We were working with that doctor. <laughs> just kidding. We did not do that. That was just a hilarious out of line joke. That was just a not a dad joke. It was an off color joke. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, I mean, it's technically it's a plane. Okay. So far. All right. Let's do this prop while I've got this thing staring me down in the face. You're All not right? going to put the screws in the wings. Yeah, I should. I wanted to I wanted to genuinely wait until we had those wires pulled up because it's possible I'm not going to be able to finish this cuz I'll have to pull the wing back off. I think you'll be able to get them though. Like with forceps. <sighs> Otherwise you're going to forget and four long ones, guys. Take off and the wings are going to fly off. That's a Phillips. Dang Phillipses. They're always causing problems. Life used to be so much easier before you were one of them. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. dang, kind of slipped there. right out. There it goes, let's see if it goes in the hole. I can't say it's not. Oh, it's puckering already. Oh, that was uh, really easy, okay. surprisingly easy. Okay, so now watch how I do this, guys. I'm gonna do this correctly. Put it in the hole of the screwdriver, guide it in. You know, I gotta say guys, as much trouble as we're giving FMS on this build because of the stupid comment on the box, which is really not that big a deal. Um, this has gone together like really easy. Yeah. <laughs> which is surprising. Cause uh, I, I was expecting, that was a lot of pieces. That was a lot of pieces. And yet here we are. Yeah. Admittedly, there's still a lot of steps left. And you guys will understand but. when we're done. But the truth is like that. There's not really. I mean, radio setup, but. Uh, there's kind of a lot of steps left. Uh, there's a lot, millions of them. Millions, okay. Millions of steps, but they're pretty easy steps. How about that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this over so I can do this easier. Two millimeters, people. Everything has been two millimeters on this plane. And to be honest with you, two millimeters is kind of like the popular size. We see it a lot of times. Yeah. These weren't two millimeters. Those were the little Those Phillips. Those are Phillips. Right. Yeah, little Phillips. I have a lot of those too. Yeah, true. Okay. On the tip, support it till it's in. Give her heck. Doesn't feel like I'm in. Come on, there it is. Come on. Is it in? I can't tell. I don't think it's going yet. There it goes. You guys heard the slip? Mm -hmm. That's definitely in now. Don't you know? Don't you know, cheese curds. All right, we're getting there, guys. You guys see the puckering starting? See the puckering around the, the plastic? That's what you're looking for. Zoom in super close, like extreme close. Oh yeah, wow, Whew, right there. Yeah, that's the spot, okay. Good job, camera crew. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have done it without you unless I tried to do it without you <laughs> and failed miserably. Okay, now I gotta put a prop on. So every time the camera crew gets in position, I seem to move <laughs> out of the blade. way. It's all part of the show. So I'm gonna take this nut off, then I'm gonna take this prop off. And you guys are probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, stop right now, safety first. Don't put the prop on if you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, just wait and put it on later. We just are trying to, we're trying to make a short video here, obviously. Right. It didn't start. Dang it. I'll have to fix that too. Actually, I was trying to spin this on. 
because sometimes with these props you can spin them on, but uh, it's not gonna spin on because I have nothing to hang on to. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force it on. I'm just gonna ram it, ram it and cram it. Ram it and cram it. Why do they have holes in this? What the heck are those holes supposed to do? Look, I don't know. That doesn't seem very helpful. Extra. Oh, something. you know what we're gonna need? What? A croissant wrench. Mm, that sounds good. Look, we upgraded our croissant wrench. We still have this one, but I'm gonna use this one first. Okay. Hopefully it works. This is Master Force, guaranteed for life to fail. I'm sorry, that's Tool Shop. Master Force is actually pretty good. See how as I spin this, because the wood is not threaded, it's turning the motor for me. I'm just gonna get that until it's tight like a taiga. Tight, tight like a taiga. Oh yeah, that's on there. Okay, amazing. Okay. And that's not a crescent wrench because it's not made by crescent. Okay, so now everybody look at my screw length. There's, how are you gonna tell which one to use? What would you pick? I would use that one. Why? Because then there's one left of every size. Yep. <laughs> FMS trick of the day, folks. Two millimeters drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this on. We're gonna ignore the holes that are tricking you into thinking you might need them. Okay. Just torquing this down until it's uh, good. And that's a really nice fit on that spinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. This is a weird looking plane. But guys, I gotta say, there's certain planes. Let's just, let's talk about this for two seconds. If you think, hey, that's a weird looking plane, you're probably not watching this deep into the video. But I gotta say, there are a lot of planes, this is one of them, that I would have said, uh, no thanks, when I first got into the hobby, because it is definitely a 3D plane. This is not a general aviation plane. You see, you guys might see a trend in here. There's a couple of warbirds, general aviation. I really enjoy scale planes. And even if there is a real Olympus, it's a 3D plane, okay? So it's not my first go-to choice. But the thing is, I have developed a huge appreciation for different aircraft as I've worked through the ranks of airplanes in this hobby. And I really enjoy and have a strong appreciation for these different planes, okay? Oh man, that magnet is tight, which is good because this That's is a uh, 3D plane. Okay, yeah. you don't want that popping off, okay? So let's talk about when I was ramming the wires in earlier, mm -hmm. okay? Do you remember where I was See, ramming them? I told you, it was totally I was me. ramming them right here, okay? So I just wanna talk about this for a minute. First of all, the receiver can go wherever you want because we're installing it. They have a quick release slide thing for some reason, which is very weird. Don't quite understand how that's supposed to work. Where does it come out? Uh, yeah. It doesn't. Oh, what a, oh. Okay, hold on. Whoever Wait. designed this was probably the same one that did the bolt together comment. Right. But like, seriously, look guys, it doesn't, it doesn't come out, okay? That is, so that you can literally, the only reason they did that was so you can get these wires through, is what I'm thinking. That is nutty. Or nutty. you can get your battery and then shove it back. Okay, like so let's talk about more stuff. Here's the ESC lead, okay, throttle. And then there's this like thing up front. Let's talk about that next. Do you see the thing up front, hon? I don't understand. This is gonna get cut off right now. Cause, oh, oh dang it, I tripped, oh, slipped. And, oh, dang it. Yeah, file that for you. Don't cut your hand off or fingers, please. Yes, if you could file that in the file cabinet I for me. sure can. So what I'm trying to say is you've got a little bit here, you got a little bit here. There would normally be a Y cable that would give you a little bit more reach to your receiver yeah. here. And then this of course would go under and then it would be too short. So then you've got this, which is gonna to go to the battery. It's fine. But the thing is, it's still kind of an awkward spot. Now, where do you wanna put a receiver? I guess technically you can put a receiver wherever you can stick a receiver. But if you look at the way this plane is configured, you know, this doesn't go back any further than right there. You're gonna have to go to the other side, hon. I don't Sorry. think I can. Look right here, right here. See this? That's the end. That's the stop on the track. So this can't go any further back than that. 
but also we have heavy duty straps so it should make it a little easier to get in and out but i'm like why does that thing not come out i don't get it folks if somebody could explain it to me it'd be great so just real quick understanding this could be used in an extension cord for those of you that don't have extension cords but for us we're probably going to have to put our receiver back there mm -hmm. okay so this is kind of the hybrid like radio setup slash build portion of the video. And so in this case, we need to come up with a couple of extension cords, which we do have a lot of extension cords. This is just one of probably four bags of extension cords that we have. Um, and so I'm just gonna get in here and see if we've got, like that's way too long. Actually, you know what we should do? We should come over here, because we're gonna need to extend even the ESC line right? I think so. That came with the plane. So we're going to be up one Y cable. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extend. Yeah, that's a Y cable, Y cable, Y cable, Y cable. Ooh, extension cord ish. Nope. Y cable. And that's the other thing is if you got a million Y cables sitting around, you can also use white. That would be good for the, uh, for the ESC because it's got a bigger gauge wire. I kind of like that. So that's okay. pretty sweet. And that's probably about the right, about the right length length. Okay. And then what I can do is I can feed that underneath the tray. You, we might have enough to get back where we need to go. We might not need that. It depends on where the ESC goes. There's like no extension cables in here, hon. Oh, yes, there is. There's, what the frick kind of extension cord is that? That's the one you were talking about the other day. No, it's okay. It was it's so all special. part of the show, guys. Here's another extension cord. Now, the other thing you can do is, this is what I was getting at, is if you have a bunch of Y cables lying around and you don't have a tool to build ends, you can just use two Y cables and you'll be fine. Why do we need Y cables? Y cables will share a channel from one output on your receiver to run generally the ailerons. In our case, I wanna have flapperons and spoilerons on this plane. Um, not that we'll absolutely need them, but what's gonna happen is we'll need to now extend these wires if we can't reach the receiver. Because if you can see where that bulkhead is, Show them with your finger as you're filming, please. Right here. Okay, now, how long is the wire? <laughs> Only exactly. slightly longer. I mean, barely, barely enough. Barely. Like, it's not probably going to be enough. So there's two ways to do this. I can either hog out the foam here, which I don't like because that's in the middle of a big structural po portion of the plane, a, mm -hmm. portion, a portion of the plane. Or we can get wires that go forward but then that means like these will reach to the forward portion. That would be fine. But you're gonna have to extend them. We're gonna have to extend these forward and these are also gonna chase under as well. And I don't really care, that's not a big problem. So it's either we have it back there or we have it up here. And I don't think it really honestly makes a big difference. However, back in the day when we used stabilized receivers and auto leveling receivers, things that were more like along the lines of flight controls, it was always generally accepted that you would do that close to the center of gravity. Well, obviously the, the center of gravity is gonna be like back here on a 3D plane, mm -hmm. right? Well, guess where that bulkhead is? That's gonna stop this thing from sliding in the tray, right at the freaking center of gravity. So it's kind of a weird setup, folks. Now, lucky for us, when you're using an AS3X and safe equipped receiver, you can mount these in any position you want, so long as it's either flat, 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 whoops, flat, flat, flat. You don't wanna be at 45 degrees mm -hmm. of a transitional state from one of the axes, okay? Now, if you are, you can actually run it that way, especially like if you do a flat in a tail dragger. That's the way you're supposed to open those. Did you see I just did that? Smack them. Ha! So if you mount it on a tail dragger, you can do a correction to get it level, okay? But in this case, I am torn. It looks like it probably has to go up in the front here, hon. Which is annoying, but it's not that big a deal because once we do our extension cords, we'll just put all of these together and slide them under the tray okay. and then push the tray back, lock it in place, and then we'll be golden. Okay. So that leads me to my next step. What's my next step? You have to go downstairs. And get extension cords, so I'll be right back. All right, so I have some that are not like super long here. Uh, we just had to go through some difficulty figuring out. And if you look, you can kind of hold this up next to your Y cable that was provided and it's pretty similar, okay? So we'll just kind of put that back for another project. And what I want to do is I want to incorporate these and see if that's going to give us enough length to get out to the front. 
and it looks like it might. If it doesn't, we can also use two, but the more connections you have, the more likelihood of having a problem, okay? So first things first, I'm gonna just try this and see if we have enough to get up front. Okay, so there's that and there's that. Now, if you're in any doubt that these are gonna stay together, you can tape them, you can glue them, you can do a bunch of different things. We've done a bunch of different things over the years. In our case, I think we're probably where we wanna be with just plugging them in and see if we have the right length, okay? So there's an aileron and an aileron and I don't really care which one's which. And uh, so if you look right here, we still don't quite have as much length as the other ones. And if we put our receiver up here, we should have a pretty easy time doing all that work, except we're gonna really be limiting ourselves here, okay? Now the compromise is you go back here, you have plenty of length, okay? And you'll be able to mount that receiver wherever you want. Now we could mount it to the side, we can mount it wherever. But then our next thing becomes how long does the throttle need to be if we go back there, okay? So that's the trade-off if we do that. And I'm kind of of the mindset that we could mount to that plastic part there. That might not be a bad spot to have it. So why don't we just go to the back, okay? It's gonna be closer to the CG, and then we can use the throttle wire and see if it'll reach. Because I don't think it's probably gonna, well, it probably could. It could, and then we can save this whole length, this extension, yeah, for another nice application. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this through. So guys, what we just did was pretty basic stuff and you have to be prepared to make some of those nasty decisions from time to time. I don't like having to make those decisions, but at the same time, if you want flapperons, then that's the decision you're gonna have to make, okay? I'm sliding my label back so I can have an easier time sliding this through. It's the only one that uses the Futaba color code as opposed to the Hextronics back here for whatever reason. I don't know why that is, but or the Hextronics JR color code, I think is what we would call that. And I am gonna get some forceps. If you guys don't have forceps in your repertoire, I would get them. They are very handy and they are very useful. And I've got some ball joint pliers that we'll use a little bit later. So we'll just have those out. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this connector and just, uh, work it, work it, and work it some more, and then eventually get under that Velcro. Once I'm under the Velcro, I think it'll be pretty easy to get the, the thing through. I understand why FMS put this tray in, but it's like still kind of a lot of dinking around if you ask me. Okay, so that's where it needs to be now. And I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go with, that's probably where it needs to be, okay? Now, what'd be really, 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 really nice is if we could eliminate this, this extension cord, because then we could probably just put all of them facing forward. So all that wasted time could be avoided. How okay. far back is the tray gonna go though? Now that you have that throttle line back there? Um, I don't know. It's, it, we're gonna be committed once we plug it in. So we'll find out in a minute if that's gonna work or not, okay? okay? So the next step for us in, in this like hybrid radio setup is to basically build a profile for this plane, okay? So building a profile should be relatively easy um, applicationally because we're doing flapperons and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. But just bear in mind, we might take a second and clean up a little bit and come right back. All right, so we're gonna get ready to set up our transmitter for a profile. And the profile is gonna be for the F3A Olympus in the 1400 millimeter size class. We've got just whatever random 6S pack we had lying around. This is not the battery we're gonna to use to fly with, but it's just easy to work with because it's small. And I'm gonna hit back and cancel. I'm gonna to scroll to add new model. I'm gonna change it from a heli back to an acro and create. And we'll pause while it waits. Okay, so my model system takes a little longer because I have so many models in here. Okay, model select, model type. We already set that and model name. So this is where we're gonna type it in. I use a legacy keyboard, full disclosure. So we'll be right back. All right, so FMS F3A Olympus, 1.4 meter. Okay, so we'll hit back. Aircraft type, this is where we're gonna set the wing to dual ailerons or flap rounds. Okay, so dual ailerons or flap rounds, I believe they both unlock the same menu structure. They should give you differential and they should give you flaperons functions or spoilerons. 
it's a normal tail type. And I'm gonna select an image, standard file. It's actually not that far off from that, but we'll see what we've got. Oh, yeah. There's nothing with like extra wings. An auxiliary wing? Yeah. yeah. I don't think there is. I mean, we could do like that, because sure. it's 3D. Okay, flight mode setup. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. Normally, when I have a plane that doesn't have a retracts, I would use A, but I've gotten away from that because I accidentally turn safe on while I'm taking off. Plus, this gives me the ability to turn off the mode because I'll have three modes if I use switch D. Trouble is, I, I have a harder time getting to the D than I do getting to B for flaps and A for gear, okay? So full disclosure, that's, whoops, that's what I've been doing, D. So I'm just gonna highlight it and then actuate the switch. And then I'm just gonna go back to spoken flight mode and I'm gonna change the nomenclature to meet what I want, which in this case is gonna be AS3X up here. So I'll have my stabilized flight mode. Oh, by the way, cancel, excuse me. Cancel, cancel, clears it. And then you can start from scratch, which is kind of handy. So I'll do that now and come right back. All right, so AS3X, artificial stabilization, three axis. And then we'll scroll way down to here and set it to a verbal cue as well. All right, so AS3X mode. AS3X mode. Okay. mode. Okay. Then we'll go to the middle. We'll set that to off. So cancel, cancel. We'll type in OFF. Remember, this is just a label, folks. This is not actually setting any sort of actual setting, uh, but it does correspond to the flight mode in this case. And yes, you can have a switch that's not corresponding to the flight mode that controls the AS3X mode. It does not have to necessarily be the flight mode, but this is just the way we've done it in the past because then we get the, the display on the screen, okay? The reason that happens or that that would matter is some people wanna have like weird trims set up that are not affiliated with the flight modes and that's very unusual, but it can be done, just so you know. Okay, so I'm gonna change that to say off. We'll come right back when it's done. Okay, so now off. Okay. AS3X mode off. See, that's what it would normally say. So we're gonna change that to say safe. So sensor assisted flight envelope and we'll be right back when we're done typing. So this says safe now, and then we're gonna make it say safe and scrolling way down to about there. <clears throat> Ready? So. Okay, so we've got that set. We'll start in AS3X as usual. Channel assign, I wanna change this to not be attached to auxiliary two. I don't want aux two attached to B because I'm gonna use B for my flaps, okay? Also, I don't necessarily want gear attached to A, um, but it doesn't really matter because we won't have anything actually plugged into it. So it doesn't matter. I don't think it will. Yeah, shouldn't matter. So then what are we gonna do for flight mode? Let's, we don't have to assign that to flight mode, um, but what we'll do is we'll use aux two for flight mode. So you can either do D or flight mode, okay? So remember D is commanding, you can scroll all the way over and then flight mode, or you can just actuate D. So now aux two will be how we control things. But just keep in mind, we only have a six channel transmitter but we can use the seventh channel, the seventh channel to control it. And you can use the eighth channel for mode uh, for gains. And then you could use the ninth or 10th and because we have a 10 channel transmitter. And you're like, but this is only a six channel transmitter. Yes, it is six channels of pluggable, but then there's more beyond that for unpluggable activities, which is kind of nice, okay? All right, so now that we have that done, we can walk back out. We can set up throttle cup first. <clears throat> switch H, looking down here, moving the stick, no throttle, that's what we want. Throttle cuts off, now it's working, okay? I'm gonna go out of this menu and turn on throttle cut, everything should be good to go. Now I'm gonna set up dual rates and expo. Okay, this is gonna be a different dual rates and expo than we usually do because it's a 3D plane, okay? So I'm gonna actually set negative expo on the top setting, I'm gonna set this is gonna be my low expo, which is more where we normally start. And then I'm gonna set 
kind of a lot up here because I don't know how touchy it's gonna be. And we're gonna drop the rates in that mode. So this is gonna be like actually negative expo, which makes the sticks super sensitive. That's our normal. And then that's gonna be our dead end stick. So we're gonna make sure we start in that mode, okay? In your curve two, you did, or in curve one, Angie, you did 10% expo. That's expo minus 10%, 10%, mm -hmm. 10 and then 20%. Okay. We'll do 20. Because normally we do five, 10, 20. Mm -hmm. But on this plane, I want some like super precision, crazy 3D stuff, and then normal flight mode. And then if we need it to get to the ground, we can get to the ground. So maybe it would make better sense to set that to zero at some point. So it's like 20 and then minus 10. Okay. So like I said, this is an unusual setup for us. We don't do a lot of 3D planes. But this is what we're going to do. And we're going to see how it works. And you guys are probably going to think, that seems kind of dumb until you try it yourself. Or I'm going to crash and you can laugh and point all you want. Excuse me. Okay, and we're just gonna do the same exact thing on the same switch. I don't need a bunch of pilot fatigue for having 47 different switches doing different things because I'm not gonna remember what the heck those switches do. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna start in this mode. That'll be our normal flight mode. We wanna go 3D, we'll go up, which is more sensitive. And if we wanna get less sensitive, we'll go down. Okay, so right there. And throttle cut set, flap system is not set yet because we don't want anything crazy happening, switch B. And we're just gonna leave it in neutral and we're gonna set the speed to two seconds. Okay, now we don't even know which direction this is gonna go yet because we haven't plugged things in. And that's our next move. So we have everything except for the timer set. So let's do a countdown timer. Did they tell us how long? No. Okay, then I'm not gonna mess with it. I'll probably just set it to like five. I'm gonna make it active, anything over 25%. At one minute, I want voice. At 20 seconds, I want nothing. At 10 seconds, I want a voice countdown. And then expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. All right, so we should be getting the throttle cuts on. We can walk over to this menu, then we can see where things need to be plugged in. All right, so that's why we do that first in the model profile has to be created before we can go ahead and hook things up. Because depending on which receiver you use, you're gonna hook things up different, okay? So we can just leave this right here where we can see, we're gonna go ahead and grab this. The camera crew kindly took the staple out earlier, so we can just slide this out. I don't have to karate chop it. Hiya! Like earlier. That did work good though. We do have to save the packaging forever though. That was my camera crew trying to be very smart. <laughs> she doesn't evidently think it's a good idea to keep that wonderful stuff. Now, this has an external antenna. This is a 3D plane. You know, most people aren't gonna fly 3D planes four miles out. So you could maybe do a 630 on here and save a few bucks. But honestly, I feel like for five bucks, it's nice to have an external antenna. The 630 has a slightly different pin design where they come in the bottom. That would be handy on this plane, admittedly, because of where those wires are gonna go. If we it's run a into little bit length issues. If we do. Okay, so okay. second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this wonderful plane to its side like this. And I'm gonna pull this close because the camera crew is having trouble seeing. Is that safe? What do you mean is it safe? Okay, I just want to fall. Safe enough. Okay. Okay, so how do we know how this plugs in? It says right here, minus plus S on a silk screen. Try to turn that. Of course, it's gonna come out of focus as soon as I do that. Minus plus an S, okay? So S is signal. So throttle is gonna go into port one. Not to be confused with the bind plug. We have a bind button we'll use. And does that correspond? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Throttle, then right aileron, okay? So there's two of these. I'm just gonna say this is the right aileron, okay? Now I am tempted to just try and see if we can do it without the extension cords. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna just do this. Of course, it's gonna make it a real pain in the neck because now our wires are short for the whole duration of this process, but it is what it is. I do have the extension cord here if we need it. The next one, of course, is elevator. Okay, so elevator is gonna be one of the two long cables. Not sure which one, they're probably marked, maybe. Yep, they are. Okay, elevator. So this is the next one. And what I'm doing is I'm cable management wise, I'm pulling this cable to see what direction the yellow needs to go. And then I'm gonna slide it in there. Yellow goes that direction, okay? 
Then the next thing is rudder. You can tell by looking at the screen. One, two, three, four. Rudder. Okay, so the rudder, I'm gonna untangle. Camera crew is not giving you a shot down there because evidently she didn't know that you were trying to see what I was doing. So I'm gonna just put this in the hole right here. Here, I'm gonna stop and show you what I'm looking at. I'm looking down there and seeing how the wires are manipulating down the length of the plane, okay? So as you can see, got that. Now this one, of course, is gonna be the left aileron. And it looks like we're gonna go past gear and out the left aileron. So we're gonna be on the sixth channel for this. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the extension cord, see if I need, if I need it, I'll use it. If I don't, I won't, okay? Now I'm also gonna come around underneath and I'm gonna plug it in like that. And then this one I'm gonna unplug and go under the throttle channel, okay? Okay, so I'm just trying to untangle while I can, and I can right now, so I know you guys can't, can't probably see very good, so our apologies. We're Did you skip port five and yes. go to six with your left aileron? Thank you, good catch. Okay, so that needed to go into the six channel, guys, my apologies. It's just hard when they're short wires like this. Yeah. Okay, so now this needs to be spatially aware, so my hope is I can put this back here and get enough reach. And as you can see, it's not going to reach. Because look, what's the first thing that happens? The, well, hold on. Um, that is past the bulkhead, but I mean, I'm talking just barely. Can it be sitting up like that? Yeah, it could actually be, but that would be a weird way to do it. Um, we have tons of length here. Look how close we are there too. So annoying. It's almost like what we ought to do is just take off those extensions. If I could get my hands back here and do it, I would do it, but I don't know that I can, so I'm not gonna do that. And I am gonna install these extension cords. So I do need extension cords. If you use a Y cable and you set it up without flap rounds, you don't have to do this step. And keep in mind, you can use one extension cord for one of the cables. And that would at least mean that you only have to provide then one, okay? But now that we know that's going in there for good, it's a little bit tempting to throw a little bit of glue on that connection just to keep it from pulling out easily because that is a pretty easy one to come out, okay? Okay, and then the same thing here, I'm gonna use the extension cord on channel six for the left aileron. Of course, make sure your colors are matched up. Do you realize you dropped the staple from no, the packaging? That's a, that's a different staple. I threw that other staple away and it was bent in half. Are you sure? I'm positive, okay, a then, million percent. And that means that I did that. <clears throat> so I take it all back. I'm trying to do cable management here, guys, if you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't like that being over there. I only did that because of the length issue. Now I'm going back to where I was before. Yes, it is picky stuff like that that makes a difference between a plane that crashes and a plane that succeeds. Succeeds. Just like the difference between using the right word and the wrong word. Okay, so now we have some length to work with. We can go ahead and decide how we want this to go. I don't even know how I want it to go yet. I don't know that it really makes a big difference, but we're gonna be limited on length by something. And it's gonna probably be our electronic speed control now. So the electronic speed control cable is the next thing that's gonna give us length issues. But as you can see, at the end of the day, we can technically, I think we can put it this way if we wanted to sideways, which would be an unusual mounting technique as well. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that, but you can see where this bulkhead ends is right where my middle finger is. So we have a little bit of room to work with, but it's gonna be right on the edge, guys, right on the edge. See, if I put this flat like that, then this has to loop back up and down, okay? Like that. And I don't think we have enough to clear that all, right? On the throttle line. So if we had an end pin receiver, like a 630, then you would save all that length. <laughs> would that be crazy if we had to do a 630 on here just to save another extension cord? I mean, it is $5 cheaper, technically. And you think? It's gonna work exactly as good for our application. It's right. Just, some people are gonna wanna get out there and be farther away. And so the antenna is just it's safer nice. in that regard. Um, <clears throat> I'm torn. 
Tony. I'm not sure what I the know, best move I is. I am torn. Too. It's kind of like there's not really a good choice. There's just a choice to be made. Right. I think I want to try putting this flat before we glue and commit to that position. Okay. Okay. I agree. So why don't we do this? Let's see if we can even get it in there. These are the decisions that you have to make while you're doing a plane. And most people just assume that it's all, you know, super simple and basic, but it's not always super simple and basic. Sometimes there's a lot of different criteria that go into the decision making. And um, we try to help you guys work through it by working through it on camera. So that'd be the center. And we are past the bulkhead, but I'm just not sure. I think we're gonna have to just try it and see if we can reach. How now, are you? Now, we got to attach it. Yeah. And I know this is a little bit unusual for us to use glue. We don't use glue often. Usually we do use like 3M double-sided tape. But in this case, I just don't have much height. The more height we do, I could try going like this, but I am not 100% certain of that position. So all I'm gonna do is it's going on to foam and then it's plastic up here, but I'm gonna still put some on there. And yes, this stuff, you can put it on there relatively thick if you want. Um, it's probably not gonna make a huge improvement in the adhesion, but you definitely don't wanna short change that. And don't want that to stick to the wing either. And then I'm gonna take, you remember these things that you wanted to get rid of earlier? The reason I kept that is because I anticipated this ahead of time that we were gonna have to slather that. And so what I'm doing is I'm slathering it in this area back here where I believe it's going to end up in relatively close proximity to where it's gonna end up, if not exact. And it's not gonna hurt anything having a little bit of extra sticky spot there because worst case scenarios, the cables just stick to it, okay? Not a, not a big problem. Mm -hmm. Now we need to let that cook off for just a couple of seconds. And when I say cook off, I mean chemically react with the ambient air and the oxygen or whatever it is it does with this magical stuff and start to cure a little bit. And then it's gonna be super tacky and you'll stick it and it will like never move, okay? Um, until we want it to move and then it's gonna move a lot because it's gonna come out all at once. Uh, so we might end up just waiting a minute and coming right back. Okay, so we're gonna throw caution to the wind. Worst case scenario, we'll have to add an extension cord to the throttle line, okay? So this has been sitting up for, what did you say, like two minutes maybe? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this stuff to try to avoid sticking it into the glue. I'm just gonna hold that and then slide it back into position, which is gonna be as far back as I can get it. Make sure it's past the bulkhead and then just kind of rock it into position. Um, obviously we'll have to be able to reach the bind plug or uh, the blind bind button or the bind plug, one or the other. And we're just gonna like, evaluate whether or not we like the position. Because if it's not right, we can just wiggle it right now and it'll go. But after you know a couple hours, it's gonna be stuck forever, okay? Until of course we rip it off. Once you rip it off, you have to re-glue it, okay? Right. Um, so a couple things to talk about, prop safety. Obviously that's a big prop. You don't want it to hit you. You don't want it to hit your face. You sure as heck don't want it to hit anybody else in your family that you care about. And so we're gonna do everything we can to protect ourselves, but we're not going to take the prop off. You might wanna take the prop off. If you have any doubts, take the prop off. I don't have any doubts because we've done this enough times that we have developed a system that keeps us safe and it has worked well for us. That doesn't mean it's gonna work well for you. So don't send me pictures if you cut yourself. People have cut themselves, people have sent pictures. Please don't do that. Okay, you ready? So that's glued in. So now let's go ahead and see where our wires sit. Obviously the antenna wire can be re kind of manipulated. I'm just gonna slide it back into the back of the plane. Yeah. And so I'm going to use my forceps just to kind of help it walk back there. And once it's back there, it should just kind of leave it. it shouldn't really be a big deal. It's, if this was just a little teeny bit bigger, I could get my hand back there. Yeah, you almost could. But I can't, so we're gonna just go with what we can do. Okay, so now the second thing is we've got these two wires are going back to the elevator and rudder. So I'm just gonna kind of just real gently so I don't tempt disconnecting anything. I'm just gonna make a little bundle. I'm just gonna run my hand back again, same thing, kind of back there. It doesn't really matter if it's loose as long as it doesn't hit any of the moving surfaces like actuating servos inside the body of the plane or whatever, and it's not. Okay, now the second thing is I'm getting a little bit of second thoughts about these connector styles. This is a connector style I haven't used for some time. It just feels like it's a little too easy to disconnect. 
And so, yes, I'm actually gonna use foam glue on here. I know some of you are probably thinking that's not the right type of glue and you would be correct because this is clearly not foam. But believe me, that little bit of glue will make this hard to unplug when we need to unplug it for diagnostics here in 10 minutes when something goes wrong. And then you guys can point and laugh at that point. It'll be no big deal. It'll just be a big chum fest between everybody, okay? So you see I've got a little bit of glue spread out and just kind of slathering that up with my fingernail. And that'll just give us a little bit extra bond. It's not like it's gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be like Bond, James Bond, you know, it's not gonna be like that. Not like that. Okay, now we're gonna do the second one. Camera crew is getting my lid that dropped on the ground. And I'm gonna just go just real super, super light, light amount of glue, just hardly anything. And I'm just gonna go a little teeny bit on the other side on this one and just slide that together. It's just gonna create a little extra friction. If you decide to unplug it, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little teeny bit of glue and just slide it in on the other side too. And it's just gonna make it hard for those to pop out. It's not like it needs to hold some heavy mechanical load. By the way, when you lay that on the counter, you might wanna not lay it with the glue side down since this is your kitchen. Just saying. All right, guys, so now the next move is I'm gonna take the excess from, uh, yeah, you remember how I was talking like 10 seconds ago about needing to disconnect these? Look at this, Yeah. literally 10 seconds later. What are you oh, doing? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to push this in the hole and this is now in the way. And it's frustrating, guys, because I have done this now three times and it's just an awkward place to reach, okay? It is so weird too, because we've built so many different planes and we've done so many different weirdities. And it seems like no matter how many weird things we've done, there's always another weird one to do. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell if you're getting a shot that people can I'm see. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, well, I hope, I hope it's not just my shoulder. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this down somewhat as, you know, as I can get it. Because remember, when we slide that tray back, there's not gonna be a lot of control over where these wires go. They will be where they are. If that makes sense to anybody watching, give us a thumbs up. When you're subscribing, don't forget to click the bell for notifications. It's a good way to get notified of new content because otherwise the YouTube algorithm will have to decide that you deserve to know. Just tell it you deserve to know. Also, if you guys want to buy something to help support Brian Phillips RC for these RC woes that we put ourselves through, then that would be one of the best ways to financially support us as we make small commissions from the different manufacturers that we work with. And that's how we fund our channel after all. And we've told you that for years and always been totally upfront with you guys about the way that we earn a little bit of money on this channel. Also, I am getting really annoyed with this stupid throttle cable and I'm going to glue it down. Okay. Sorry, I already threw away my Q-tip. Nobody likes to waste a Q-tip on one throttle cable. What are you gonna glue it to? Excuse me. I'm gonna glue it to the bottom. Because I, first of all, I don't want to fight it and it's annoying. And second of all, I don't want that tray to catch it. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little teeny bit of this. It doesn't take much, okay? Something like this, like one little gap pull, if you will. And I'm just gonna slather it along the length of this, just as simple as that. And then once I got that slathered on there, I'm just gonna stick it down and then I'm gonna stick it down and it's probably not gonna stick right away and that's fine. Okay, then I'm gonna slather a little teeny bit more back here where it's kind of close to the receiver and then that's gonna be the last spot. But you see why I care? Because I need that to be collapsed, otherwise it's not gonna clear as I slide the slide back. So for those of you that are brand new to RC, welcome to RC. It's not always this frustrating, but sometimes it's much more frustrating. <laughs> exactly. It just depends on the plane. And to be honest, FMS usually does a really good job of making planes not frustrating. And to be honest, some of the times these things are frustrating, it's because I'm anal retentive and I want these things to be as perfect as perfect gets, as perfect as I can do. And so I hope that you guys have the same expectations and you want to do the same thing with yours. 
Because like, now that that's all plugged in, check this out. That can snap all the way in and we're not having any issues. And look how nice all that looks. Guys, look at that. Cable management matters. I hate to break it to you. And what really drives me crazy, and this is from a guy that's built hundreds of these planes, not just a few, hundreds. I built hundreds and there are hundreds of times the probably 25% of the time the manufacturers could have had the wires all in one spot and just had a designed spot for all the wiring to be in and work it out. I don't want to do that as a consumer, especially not today's day and age. So that being said, I understand that because I've built hundreds, I'm a little bit more picky about that stuff and you might not be. And so we want to respect that because we understand you might be in different circumstances where you're only going to end up building four or five of these things a year. And so no big deal. You might not find it to be as annoying. Well, we do. So take it worth a grain of salt. Also, I am going to put in some shelf liner now that we have all the wires kind of located where we think they need to go. Okay. Also, this cable management has me thinking that that glue trick worked pretty good on the uh, wire there. And so to avoid the potential conflict, I am going to take and just throw a little teeny bit more right there. And then once that tacks up, which will take oh, probably 30 seconds to a minute, I will, because I did it really thin, I'm gonna push down those aileron wires for the flap rounds. You're gonna have to come a little further over, sorry. You can't be where I need to be though. This is one of the things guys you don't understand if you haven't ever filmed with your wife, okay? We have to be here to reach inside. We can't turn the plane too much. And it is kind of frustrating to film when you're both trying to be in the same spot because I have to do it or there's nothing to film, but she has to do it or she can't see. Or there's nothing to see. And so it's kind of like, you know, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. So you, you kind of do it anyway. I think that's our rule, right? <laughs> yeah, it's our life. Wait, model. I think most people would do damned if you do, damned if you don't, you just don't. Well, we do. We're on the flip side of that equation, okay? So anyway, as you can see, we've got those things uh, tacked down there nicely now. And of course I tacked it in the wrong position. I wanted the colors the same because I think we just talked about this, the fact that I am what? Uh, anal retentive. Yes, that's right. And that's why I have forceps. Yes. By the way, forceps are like um, one of my favorite tools for this type of installation. It really, 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 really helps to have forceps for this sort of thing. Look how nice that is, guys. That's that amazing. will be nice like that in six months after I've been 3D flying with this plane. Promise. Unless I decide to take it off, okay? If I take it off, I take it off and, you know, that's a different circumstance. Now, shelf liner. Why do we need shelf liner, camera crew? Uh, so your stuff doesn't rattle around in your drawers. Wrong. What Wrong. You, there's Wrong. There's no Velcro. Are you just gonna glue Wrong. it to the tray? I'm gonna glue it. Tell me the correct answer, camera crew. So that your battery doesn't slide around. Thank you. Okay. Because then you don't have to tighten this as hard as you would otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Now, why does that matter? So you don't break your tray because you pulled yes, the strap too hard. Yes, exactly. I've been here. I'm paying attention. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. See this? Look at this. Look at this. What? That wire is driving me nuts. You see that oh, orange geez. wire? Why is that orange wire separated? Good. You're, you stay there, orange wire. Orange she glad. Hey. Speaking of orange, <laughs> oh man, we're about to embark on an orange chicken delight made by yours truly, Brian Phillips, RC. That's right. And the camera crew will help me. And so will our oldest son. And then the rest of the kids will watch us work. Mm -hmm. and point and laugh. And then eat. Well, Not some our of youngest. Them. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll eat some he rice. No, he likes orange chicken. Yeah, he did. He like liked this. it the other Yeah, way. it's going to be good. Yeah. Okay, so now this little tackiness. Now, here's the funny thing. You remember when we were complaining endlessly about the glue? Well, yeah. this glue is by choice. It's used a lot of glue. Okay. Right. If I choose to you glue. You can choose to glue. Then I'm good with it. Right. Okay. Okay, now this is not dry yet, and it doesn't need to be completely dry. But all I really want to do is I want to run, you know, I almost feel like I need to go a little longer, don't you? 
Really? Yeah, because I don't know exactly how that battery is going to lay out there. Yeah, I don't either. I'm sorry. I kind of screwed the pooch on that one, guys. What are we going to do with that extra shelf liner now? We're going to use it um, for another seven planes. So we just have to keep it for like six or seven Great. days. But look how perfectly it's made. I don't understand. You're so bad at cutting shelf liner. Which is hilarious because like, you saw lines. all that work I just did for those wires yes. that don't matter. They do matter. Who am I kidding? Okay, look at that fancy dance right there. Fancy dance. Now that's stuck down there and it doesn't even need to be stuck all the way down the length. But the idea being that once you secure your battery in here, then you can secure it in such a way that it's positioned properly. Now, we do wanna check the CG. And so for that reason, we have our 4050C. Uh, this is a Gen 2 6S battery with an IC5. It does have a data line. You don't need the data line because this battery, of course, is going to be plugging into an EC5, which also stands for E-Flight. E so it's gonna go like this, right? And that data line's not gonna hook to anything, so who cares? So now that we have shelf liner in there, we can snap this back into place, which I need to grab my plane by the tail here and snap it in. And then I'm just gonna put this centered for now and see if we have any issues there with alignment. It feels like it's gonna go good. Now, it would be really kind of convenient if I could go flat with it, and I think I can. Yeah, I think I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I can. Although this 4000 seems to be dimensionally similar on both sides. Now, they might have done that so it's easier to strap it. I don't know. The slide? And then push it back when you've got it positioned. I, I don't know. But we do know, what do we know about straps, hon? You... A plane that's easy to strap a battery in, you're more uh, likely yes. to use. Yeah. And that is no joke, guys. That's like deadly serious. Deadly yep. serious. If it's hard to load the battery. You're not gonna use the plane as much. It. Well, you might fly it, but you're not gonna fly it as much. And some, for those of you that don't have 400 planes in your basement, you know, that might be a little bit different circumstance, and I understand that, but. It's even, still you, true. It's still true. You'll it's just, just true to a lesser extent. Yep. Okay. So here we go. So we've got that down there. We've got that down there and that's gonna suck like really bad to undo. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is, okay? So now you're probably thinking, okay, just plug it in. Wrong. I am going to, I'm thinking about plugging it in with this. Still? Just so I don't, well, whatever. We'll just plug it in. So let's talk about this for a second. Safety first, safety first guys. We don't want you guys to cut your hands off. Please don't send pictures if you do. Be careful, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip the plane down. I'm gonna walk out of monitor mode. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to where it goes to bind. I'll be ready, my throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down. I have this here. The prop is clear of me by about eight inches. Okay, I have ready access to the transmitter. I have ready access to the battery. Worst case scenario, I'll hold the plane until the battery dies. That's never happened in my life, but I'm prepared every single time I do this until I can trust the plane. Once I can trust the plane, then we can move on without further delay. I need to be careful about passing my hand through where it could start. So I'm gonna stand over here like a goon and I'm gonna plug it in. Now I'm gonna wait until I can trust the plane. I can't trust the plane yet, why? Because it's not bound. So I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna press this button, okay? So it's obviously not started so I can at least work around it. I need a tool that's gonna give me access to plug, to hit the button. Once I press the button, it snaps. Now you see that bright orange flashing light back there. I'm gonna bind. I want to do it with the plane level. It doesn't actually matter. Telemetry. Bind complete. Auto configuring the telemetry and here we go. So all the servos are not hooked up to anything so we can't see any of that. But the good thing is no throttle. That's what we want. Throttle cut is currently on and tested. Throttle cut is currently off and now I'm going to test that going the right direction. Throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down, throttles up, throttles down. Everything is tested. I can now trust this plane because I believe it's going to do what I say. Also, I'm confident that we have everything where it needs to be, or at least enough that we can work the plane as needed. Now, there is one potential for conflict, and that is the fact that we don't actually know if we're in safer AS3X. I don't think it's gonna be very easy to tell either. 
because... But we haven't set up... Well, we haven't set up... Safe. We haven't activated it yet. That's true. So we can assume at this point it is off, okay? But that doesn't mean the AS3X is off. Correct. Let's just assume it is, okay? So we're going to put the canopy back on, see if that works the way we set everything up. Looks like it, it did. Well, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to flip the plane upside down. Why am I flipping it upside down? Because that's where the controls are that we need to install. They're on the bottom, okay? So now that we have that flipped upside down, I'm going to make sure I'm off the canopy. And we can start right here with the ailerons. I don't know why you're back there. Okay, so they're moving, but we don't know if they're moving in the right direction. So now we have to make some decisions about how this is going to work. There's four screws and four control horns. The control horns, as per the manual, are going to be installed like this. Where does it show? There it is. So outside to outside, okay? On all of them. That's the most critical part. So as long as we know that, we should be good to go. So outside to outside. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I don't have flaps set because remember, we didn't set them up. That was on purpose. Now, when I roll the plane, something's gonna happen. Congratulations. But is that going the right way? We don't know, and we won't. So, same thing over here. Is that moving the right way? We don't know. Now, you could sit there and reverse engineer if you've got that square at the right angle, or if you need to rethink. But for me, I am going to probably just end up, or regrettably, Sliding this in. Hmm, goodness gracious. I'm gonna end up sliding this in. Good lordy lord, that's thick. Oh, jeez. Not a very big hole. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so I'm gonna slide that down. And then I'm gonna, obviously that's gonna have to come in because we assume we're centered on our surface. So this needs to be centered. And then show them up here, please. See, that's the wrong way. I want this on the underside. See how I went like that? See how it's on the top? I want it on the bottom. So I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna go back in, and then go from the bottom, like that. That's gonna make it a real pain in the neck to take out, but that's okay because the truth is, we need this. See how long it is? It's way long, okay? So I need to go in a bunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And back and forth a couple of times to make sure I've got some freedom of movement. It's very difficult to move. And then look at that. We are getting close, guys. Got to press it on there, and you can see that it's now forcing it up slightly. So one more half turn, and I am going to have to take it off and hold it like this so I don't break it. Oh, good Lord. There we go. Half a turn in more. And all we're trying to do is get this lined up neutrally centered. Okay. Okay, so that's pushed on tight, and that is pretty well perfect. If you want to show the people, you can't show from the fence end, but you can see that's going to basically put it centered. Now, if I were to go half a turn further in, it would be overshooting, okay? So now I can take this handy-dandy tool. Now, you don't have to use a tool like this, but it is nice when you've got a heavier, whoops, when you got a heavier one like this, meaning it's going to hurt your fingers when it pops in, okay? Now, we don't even know if it's going the right way yet, so I kind of hate to put screws in, but the truth is sometimes the screws will keep these from popping off, and they do like to pop off. Whoops. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna grab a four millimeter screwdriver. Should be probably similar to like a two, number, number one, number two. Number two would be better. That's too small. Okay, so number five. Number five, let's see how that works or excuse me, five millimeter. Oh yeah, that's really good now. All right, so now we need to replicate that on the other aileron. So I'm gonna, nope, you stay where you are. I'm gonna just spin it around, see if I can do it over here. Okay, so same exact process for this side. And so if you guys didn't pick up on the first time, we're gonna do it now again, so you can practice with us. I'm gonna slide this in from underneath. Now, how do you know which direction to go? Well, just guess and check. If you get it wrong, just go the other way. But I happen to know because I just did it. Okay, now I'm gonna twist this until it locks in. The spline is gonna give you a position here 
and then the next position is gonna be there. So we're not quite perfect, but we're close enough. See what I'm talking about? This is a little bit too far forward, and this one's a little bit too far back, but that closer matches what's going on there geometrically, okay? So that means this needs to screw in like a ton, okay? So I'm gonna hold this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, man. I'm gonna hold this, nine, 10, 11. Ooh, yeah, I'm like out of throw. Let's hope I can get it on there. I'm going back half a turn. Guys, I gotta literally hold this with the tool that's like really very tight. I totally bottomed it out. But it looks like I got where I need to be, pretty much. Okay, so that's on. Now I'm gonna hold the sailor on in place and look at that, need to come out, thank God. Oh, oh that was way tight. Okay, holding that. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. I think we'll be good there. But I, I don't like that that's at an angle like this. I want it flat. So I'm gonna take and grab this hold it really tight and then square it up with my fingers. Okay, now I'm gonna let go. See how that's square? Better. Okay. Yeah, that's pulling it down, isn't it? Yeah, that's pulling that down. I need to go out another turn A still. More. Yeah. I mean, ooh, jeez. You guys, that's why you don't drop tools on there. Son of a biscuit. That is so annoying. Consequences, we call that. That's too much. Too much. This might be one of those where we're between. Yeah, that's better there. I think it's better there, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Snap it on. That is so annoying, guys. I damaged the foam there. And that is one of the battles you'll have with foamies, is that it is easier to get hanger rash and uh, I'm pretty careful with my planes compared to the average Joe, I think. Okay, now, the frustrating part is when I move my ailerons, if it's moving the wrong way, then sometimes when you reverse the direction of travel, the ailerons will lose their, like the home position changes. I don't know why that is, um, but it's just a reality of life. So, not a lot we can do about it at this point. We'll have to come back and double check it in a minute. But uh, where we are now, at least we know that our elevator and rudder are gonna get hooked up next. Okay, so obviously there's a rudder here. <gasps> Excuse me. So in actuating the rudder, I can tell this needs to be like here. And how do I know it needs to be there? Because if I went the other direction, you wouldn't line up at all with it, okay? And so kind of the same scenario, we have to test and see which direction this goes. Is it gonna go in this way or is it, ooh. Stabby, a little stabby there. That's forward of center, that's back of center. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Can they even see from that angle? Like here is what I'm talking about. See, that's forward of center and that's back of center because there's only so many spline positions, folks. So I guess I'm gonna defer to farther. I don't know, we'll see. Nah, we'll defer to closer because then I can have better penetration into this thing. There's one, two, three. See, that's just walking in slowly. We're getting pretty close. Four, I'm pretty dang close, but I think I need to pull it over one more. Okay, now I need to go over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm splined on all the way, and same thing we had with the ailerons. Come over here and show them what I'm talking about. First of all, is this square? Probably. Secondly, is that gonna put pressure on it? Yes, I think it might need to go on the inside again, which is nuts, that's like so unusual. Because when you're on the inside, it's a little harder to do service on these. You know, like it's less serviceable in my opinion, mm -hmm. okay? So now you can see, well, the other thing too is that's gonna move in a straight line. Sorry guys, I gotta block your view for a second. Okay, if I went in one more turn, I feel like I'm gonna overshoot. I'm looking at this and then yeah. the seam. It's probably about as close as we can get given the circumstances, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think I agree, it's gonna go too far the other way. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this screw in here 
And again, these are the types of things that um, like the factory should be able to do, except this would be too long then. Okay. So then there's neutral. And uh, again, I've got the plane upside down and backwards, so I'm not even gonna try to get things centered yet. I'm just gonna snap this on and be done with it for now and hope we have it correct. And then same thing with the elevator. So we have to do that on the other side here. And so basically setting up the control surfaces like this is, even though it's kind of difficult compared to not doing it, it's still a lot easier than some planes we've done in the past. Okay, so that's moving. That's obviously gonna to need to go this way. And it's past center and now it's behind center. The splines are just big on these. There's center, that's pretty good. Okay. And then I'm assuming we're gonna have the same exact scenario, so we have to go in. I would assume so. Kind of the same way. Goodness gracious. Really making me work to cram it in there. <clears throat> Okay, so there we go. Am I centered, more or less, from what you can tell? No. Nope. No, you're back of center. Back of center. Okay, let's see if I can go one step further. Is that forward now? That's whatever, it's, yeah. it's good enough. Okay, so now elevator needs to be squared up some, which means that needs to get pulled in some. Okay. There's like four turns, that's probably too much, I'm guessing now. So folks, if you haven't connected the dots on what I'm doing, all I'm doing is just lining up this ball. I just get this surface, show them right here so they can see really good. See how it's not even? I grab it with my finger, fingers to square it up, and then I just make sure this is gonna pull to the center of that position, okay? Really basic stuff, really easy to accomplish. Um, even for a beginner, it should be no problem. See, that's a little bit past. Mm -hmm. See how it's not quite even? Now when I screw this out another half a turn, it might be a little bit too much. I would rather defer up than down, okay? If given a choice, I'll defer up. There isn't a right or wrong, it's just I would rather have the plane go up into the sky neutrally than run into the ground and like destroy a prop on a takeoff. Okay, all right, <clears throat> so now that we have all that stuff put together, now I just gotta throw this screw in, which is not hard to find, thank goodness. And then when we're done screwing this in, we can turn over the plane and do the forward programming, make sure all the control surfaces are going the right direction, and all that good jazz. Now also, I just wanna show you this too. When you look at the side of this, as that sucked in tight, look what happened. It went right to the center of that. Right to the center, that's perfect. What happened to this one? Right to the center. If you'd have put that out here, you would have had an angle on this. And it puts a lot of pressure on that little control arm. And it might not seem like much to you, but I'm telling you what, you will wear out your servos quicker, you'll overdrive your servos quicker, you'll burn your motors out on your servos quicker, and I'm not just blowing smoke, your servos will be. And the truth is it doesn't take much to cause that conflict. And so there's a reason that I tell you about these things. Um, some of you may have had really good experience with not doing it right and not had a problem. Congratulations. If you're watching this video right now, you're getting help from me. I want you to have the best possible experience, folks. Even though it takes an extra 15, 20 minutes on a plane, it's not a big deal. You're not probably gonna die because of that. We're under 15%. Okay. All right, guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this project right now, and it's gonna be very easy to do. So if you guys wanna just proceed with me, I like to do this with the plane lined up in front of us so we can get our surfaces right. Elevator, wrong. Travel, reverse. Okay. Correct, 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 thank God. Roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right, awesome. Guys, they're all going the same direction you want them to. Okay, throttle cut's still on, we've already tested that. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go into flap system. Let's go ahead and talk about flaps. So under this condition, I want the flaps neutral with no elevator correction. Under this, I want them to be down some, let's call it um, 
let's call it like 30. And then let's call this like most of the way down. That's pretty big flap action. Let's go, this is a 3D plane. So we wanna still have a little bit of movement, okay? Now, because these are flap rounds, I'm not 100% sure these need to go down. The elevator needs to go down, but we're just gonna go ahead and try. And I am gonna exaggerate this a little bit with 15 and we'll do like 10 and 15, okay? So it goes down just a little bit and then it goes down a little bit more, okay? Now, historically with inboard flaps, inboard flaps, the elevator needs to go down to stop a ballooning effect when you apply them, okay? With outboard flap arons, meaning that you have an aileron that's out there and it also acts as a flap around, you generally have to pull up on the elevator to correct because instead of having a ballooning effect, you actually point down at the ground and you have to pull up the elevator to correct, okay? We're assuming this is correct. We could be wrong, okay? So as you can see, that goes down with a proportional amount to the ailerons. Okay, so roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Everything's working there. So now at this point, we have everything going the right direction so we can forward program this thing. Gyro settings, first time setup. Make sure everything's set up like what I told you to. Set the model level, continue, and then set the model on its nose and then click continue. So yes, this is, if you set it on the nose, you just have to get it so that it's laid down so it can positionally be aware of what its condition is. Does that look right? That looks correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it? The bind button is in the back, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then yep, that's right. All right. So now the plane is aware of its position and the receiver is aware of its absolute position when we, that means it's reconnecting. Okay. So elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, y'all left, roll up. Everything's working, flaps are working, good. So we're gonna go back into forward programming, gyro settings, AS3X settings. We're setting this to four for now, gains. Okay, looks good, we want them adjustable. Flight mode set up. AUX2D. See how it's changing the numbers now and it wasn't before? So in AUX1, in flight mode channel, I want that off and I want AS3X on in mode three. That's gonna be safe and AS3X. That's gonna be AS3X, that's gonna be off, that's gonna be safe, that's gonna be off, that's gonna be AS3X. Okay, now we can go back. Then go first time, uh, wait, I wanna do gain channel select. AUX3, AUX3, AUX3. So now it's adjustable. Okay. Then I go first time safe setup. Flight mode setup is already done, but you have to acknowledge it. Continue. I want safe down here. Don't worry about any of that crap. Now this is where if your plane is not level, you want it to be in the mode. You want it to be flying, okay? Not parked if it's a tail dragger like this. This is gonna sit up like this. You want it to be level like it's gonna fly. That looks pretty dang good. That looks pretty dang good. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be as close as you can. Then capture. See, the pitch is one. Okay, and then we're just gonna go next. You can see safe is gonna be self-level angle demand off and off. Got it? And you can change those values if you want. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna open up my pitch down because this is a 3D plane, I wanna be able to have a little bit more flexibility. So I'm gonna go 60 and I'm gonna go 60, which is gonna limit our pitch and um, pitch and our roll is set to 60 already, okay? We go next and I'm gonna, oh, son of a biscuit lover. I'm gonna go next. And then I'm gonna apply it. And now you'll notice it rebooted. One dance, then two. That means safe is active, but not necessarily on. It happens to be on now. Okay, so now elevators and ailerons working. 
limited bank angles. Okay. You can see, you can see it on the screen and you can hear it in the voice. There's no ambiguity about what mode you're in, which is really nice. Now, the other thing you can do to check is you need to check your gains. So I'm gonna turn my gain all the way up and I'm gonna turn my throttle cut off, make sure my prop is clear. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now we should have AS3X active. Yep, it is. See it coming towards you? See it coming toward me? See it going up? See it going down? Look at the aileron. Aileron going up, aileron going down. See the aileron going up, going down? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously it's working. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on its mains. I'm gonna move this out of the way real briefly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just move it, turning down the gain to nothing. Turning up the gain to full, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, AS3X and safe. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down. It's gonna find the quickest route to level. That's all automatic in safe. Sensor assisted flight envelope, look at the elevator. It's gonna go to level or it's gonna bring it to level. Okay, so safe is working. Now watch this, I'm gonna turn off safe. You need to, you need to check these modes. Off, AS3X. Elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, flaps on, full, up, down, up, down, up, down. Rudder, 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 up, down. Okay guys, it's working, AS3X is on, safe is on. We're currently running in AS3X mode. Now, the only thing that's really technically left is for us to change the multiplier, okay? So you remember how it said four times? This thing is long, good yeah, lord. Yeah, it is. Can I even put it on here? Yes, yep. I can. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna go back into forward programming. We're gonna first of all turn our knob to about middle, not that it matters. I'm gonna go gyro settings, AS3X settings, and I'm gonna change this 4X down to 1X, okay? We're gonna walk out. Hey, that didn't jump around. I wonder if they fixed it in the firmware update. Oh yeah, it didn't. So, all right, this thing is set up with everything except for center gravity marks. Mm -hmm. So 180 to 190 millimeters, good Lord. Can we even do that Camera with crew, our calipers? Come look, please. Camera crew's gonna double check and show you guys what it looks like on the page. 180 to 190, man. Yes, I know, that's a long ways back. What color is the top of the wing? Red, black, blue. or blue? Blue, where you are gonna mark it, probably. Okay, so worst case scenario, we may have to tape it off on this one, which would be unusual for us. So normally what we'd use is digital calipers. We only go to 150 millimeters. Why do they not measure from a better spot? Ooh, so dumb. Okay, so we're gonna go 100 back, because that's easy to get to. And we're gonna make a reference, okay? Close okay. enough. So this is gonna be 100 and then we're gonna go 80 and then 90. 80 and 90. Okay, so, and that's from the inboard most, most portion of the yeah. wing. Now hold on, stay there please. Look at the wing, show the people the wing. Do you see that curl? How are we supposed to know where they're measuring from? Is, it from, is it from here or is it from here? No, it's from yeah, do you know? I don't. Yes, they told me. That's a hundred. Okay. So where do you measure from then, camera crew? I don't know. I know it's... I, I don't know either. I'm just gonna measure from the... I'm just gonna measure from the front of the wing. So there's a hundred. Okay, now I need to go 80 to 90. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna unlock this and I'm gonna go to 90 because I'm already closer. So this is the back position, okay? Now you notice I'm not highlighting that hole, but it is there. Good Lord. That's crazy. So it's right there, okay? That's our back hole. Jeez, it is about right in the center, okay? Now I'm gonna unlock the calipers 
and I'm going to go back to 80. So 10 millimeters difference. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to use my reference point here. Okay, so there's one, and there's two. Okay, so now what that means is I can go ahead and shut this off, and it's a blue wing. So you obviously didn't understand my question. I was going to highlight those marking points there. So I always highlight these marking points with black. And some of you are probably thinking that's ugly as sin and you would be correct, but you get used to it really quick. By the way, every plane that's sitting there is marked the same way. Yep. And virtually every plane downstairs, the only reason not every one is because we used to do it even more obnoxiously with like hot glue or CA. And to be honest, this has worked and served us near perfectly. So now that we have a 4,000 6S installed, which is the middle ground for this plane. They claim you can go up to 5,000. We do have a 5,050C, okay? I'm assuming this plane is gonna be very, very happy with the way we set it up, okay? This battery's not needed. I wanna check CG. This could be kinda awkward because of the shape of the plane and it's a very long plane. Throttle cut is on, throttle cut has been tested. Okay, so this is way back in my wings too. So holding my fingers on the back hole, it's nose heavy. On the front hole, it's tail heavy. So we're good right now. And when I say nose heavy and tail heavy, it's of minimal consequence on this particular plane because just keep in mind, this is a 3D plane. So let's come around and right. show them one last thing. We're under five. Under 5%, yep. guys. So if you wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, buy these planes from the links in the video description below. All you have to do is look no further than there. If you're trying to find something similar, but not this exact plane, then check out Brian Phillips RC, okay? That's the best way to support us is by those planes. Okay, so back somewhere back here, I'm not gonna be able to mark that very good. So I'm just gonna say wires going this way, okay? So basically centered on the tray, it can also use a 5,000, but that's gonna be a different measure, okay? So you can see kind of where I drew my line there. But that's what I like to do on these planes because I don't like to check the CG every time, but it is nice to have it if you're especially flying on a 3D plane in a 3D environment, you may actually want to make the thing tail heavy or you may want to make it nose heavy, but generally tail heavy for a 3D plane. Now also keep in mind, part of the reason that I go back to 1X is because I've never really needed to go to 2X except for maybe on one plane. Okay, if you find that you wanted to go to 2X, like I like to have this end up about at 50% gain so that when I go to the next model, I don't have some drastic change, but I still have on the fly change, okay? So also we have the Expo, which is gonna make the sticks even more sensitive, okay? And it's a very subtle change. You're not gonna notice it on the ground, but you will in the air. And hopefully we've answered all your questions about the F3A Olympus in this Unbox Build radio setup. Keep in mind, we have the maiden flights published right now for your very viewing pleasure. And all you have to do is check out the playlist. If you haven't seen the playlist pop up right now, there should be a playlist for this plane and a playlist for similar planes. If you're looking for something else, like I said, brianphillipsrc.com is gonna be sorted by type and by manufacturer or affiliate that we work with. And when you do follow our links, you'll help support us financially to buy both the transmitter, batteries, receivers, planes. To buy the planes and any of the other things that we've offered on this channel in the past. We really appreciate you guys being here with us. If you're brand new to the hobby, we're here for you. If you're just returning to the hobby, we're here for you too. We try our best to do long format content. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. Click the bell for notifications when you're doing it and smash the like button. That helps us to get recognized here on YouTube and it costs you nothing. But if you do wanna support us in other ways, not just buying planes, transmitters, receivers, all that stuff from our links that are right in the video description below or over on Brian Phillips RC, then all you would have to do is just look for the Patreon link. You can be a monthly supporter that way. You can be a YouTube monthly supporter as a member or super thanks for one time or PayPal for one time opposite that. Any of those are fine, but we still think firmly the best way you can support us financially, if you want to support us financially, it's buying awesome equipment that we review because that's gonna get us clout with the aircraft manufacturers 
and then you guys have new content. And then that puts money in their pockets so they can produce better airplanes and it just keeps this little RC ecosystem going, okay? I mean, if you wanna throw us a pat on the back, that's fine, we don't wanna stop you. We appreciate all those things, but we still think firmly the best way for you to be flying is flying with us, not just watching us do it on YouTube, okay? So hopefully we've answered all your questions. Thanks guys for being here. There's so much coming on Brian Phillips RC. It's right around the corner. And thanks for being here with us and thanks for watching. Come back for more.